Rod Roddenberry is a writer, producer, and son of Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry. He's the heir to perhaps the most famous vision of positive futurism in pop culture. Our conversation details both the beliefs of he and his father, and the possibility of creating a society resembling that presented in the series that took us where no one had gone before. Well, thank you again uh, for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, Absolutely, my pleasure. If you could, um, I guess I'd like to discuss, your father had probably one of the most optimistic view visions of humanity's future ever kind of put out there in popular culture. What drove his optimism? What really sparked it? You know, uh, he obviously, he passed away when I was 17, and I wasn't mature enough to sit down and have these conversations. Uh, but I have had an opportunity that, that a lot of sons and daughters who have lost their parents haven't had, which is uh, he left an amazing legacy for me to pull from and learn from and people to speak to about uh, the man he was and his vision. So my, my response usually comes from what I've gathered mm -hmm. uh, since 1991. I can more than speculate that because of his history, his life, uh, uh, being a bomber pilot in World War II and flying 79 some odd missions and becoming a, uh, a pilot uh, for Pan American Airways, mm -hmm. Airways and flying from New York to Johannesburg, one of the longest wow. flights back then. Also, uh, being on a flight that crashed in the Syrian desert and being one of 11 survivors and then being a sergeant in the LAPD. Mm -hmm. I'm saying all this because uh, this, this history, this life that he l led, I think really gave him perspective and really allowed him to see the, the best and the worst our species has to offer. And I think when you have that sort of perspective, you, you gravitate towards the, the positive. You gravitate towards our potential because he's seen both sides of this. Absolutely. And uh, I, I think that, that, that is what was the basis of his philosophy in Star Trek. What we are capable of doing and being one day. And in fact, I think the message says what we are capable of doing and being today. Mm -hmm. We don't need the technology to be uh, an amazing species. So, uh, and, and I've learned this you know, also from the fans. You know, the, the message uh, really inspired a tremendous number of people. We've come together as a species. We've eliminated war, poverty, hunger, do you think that that will, that that will be truly possible? Do you, do you personally think that humanity will be able to reach that point? I do, I do. I, I, I don't know when it'll happen. Fear of things that are different, I think, is one of the major factors that, that causes us to uh, have these squabbles. Mm -hmm. It's one of our major weaknesses, fear of change. Um, you know, my father was an amazing person who would read books on, on the greatest uh, leaders and dictators and, and, and uh, people of our history from, from uh, Hitler, Stalin, Kennedy, uh, Abraham Lincoln, etc. And he was able to take away uh, things from, from every uh, perspective, from every point of view, whether it was uh, contrary to his own or not. He would not get emotionally involved in, in uh, these conversations. He would look at them and, and just analyze them and really contemplate the perspective from which they are coming from. So he could have a conversation about uh, the strategy and tactics of Hitler and how he was, and this is, I, I don't know this for a fact, but how he could understand the logic that went behind it, certainly didn't agree with it, yeah. but could understand the logic and wouldn't get all bent out of shape. And he would also love to take a counter argument mm -hmm. with someone. Just, and I use the word argument in a, uh, in a uh, conversational way, Absolutely. Uh, certainly not an argument, but he would love to take any side and have that discussion just to explore it deeper. Anyone who is willing to sit down and not get emotionally involved. Absolutely. And that was, I think, one of the most amazing things about him, and that's something that I, that I try to do in my own life, but it, once we all learn to, I'm not saying emotions aren't important, emotions are, are definitely a, a part of our intelligence, it's a part of who we are, but as, as long as we can think objectively and step outside our emotions and have these conversations and ask ourselves and be honest with ourselves and ask each other, you know, what can we gain from this different perspective? Mm -hmm. That's when I think we'll get to this point or get closer to this point where we are accepting of everything uh, regardless of how different it is. Is your vision of the future of humanity as optimistic as your father's? 
I believe my vision of the future is as optimistic as my father's. I, I definitely do. I've had the opportunity to grow and learn from what I've seen, heard, and read of his works, mm -hmm. and from what I've, I've, I've gleaned from the fans. I mean, the, he, you know, Star Trek really inspired the fans to start thinking this way and really got their minds thinking about this better future. And I've had tremendous, tremendously wonderful experiences with them talking about the future and our potential. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the, the forward thinkers of today. I've had the opportunity to meet and uh, speak to a number of these people. So uh, I, I do think that my vision of the future, my belief is, is definitely of an optimistic, positive future where, where we all work together for the greater good. A lot of, you know, as much as people have been influenced, scientists getting into technology to try and, oh, I want to make that happen, do you think that a good deal of the peacemakers of today or in the future will kind of have been as influenced by the philosophy of Star Trek to try and create a better, better world? Not so much by the technology presented in it, but trying to create that world presented within. Absolutely. I certainly don't want to give all credit to Star Trek. Of course, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but if I understand your, your, your question, it's not necessarily the, the technology that brings us there, but it's the philosophy in Star Trek, absolutely. or it's that vision, Yes, the people who have that kind of vision for the future. Uh, absolutely. I, I, think, I think that's why Star Trek's still around, not because of the technology, obviously, but because of the, the messaging that it had, this, this idea of, of working together for the greater good and, and not being afraid of things that are different. Um, you know, that's one of the, the core ideologies in Star Trek is idic, mm -hmm. infinite diversity and infinite combinations. And the, the main idea behind that is, you know, if, if we all sort of thought the same, it, it's not our appearances that are going to matter in the future. Being, looking different and having different colors of skin and having different clothes that we wear and styles, that becomes very one-dimensional on the surface. We're going to hopefully learn to accept that very soon, and I mm -hmm. think we're getting better at it in most places. Yes. It's the differences between our ideas that, that are really the most valuable thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what causes a lot of the problems today, even more than physical differences. So uh, when we learn to accept different ideas, uh, uh, then I think we will achieve that future that's portrayed in Star Trek. And, and you know, people often say uh, uh, tolerance is the key. And I've, I've never understood that phrase. And I've never liked tolerance as the key, because tolerance to me means I'm willing to sit next to you and tolerate you mm -hmm. and tolerate your different point of view, but I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, accepting yes. of new ideas. It doesn't mean you have to believe them, but to accept someone and their new idea and to be level-headed and not emotional, and actually perhaps there might be something in that idea you can incorporate into your own ideologies. Mm -hmm. That's how you will grow as a species. That's how you will evolve. So I, I think that is the key. A good deal of both the original Star Trek and The Next Generation uh, seem to be uh, kind of skeptical towards religion. Mm -hmm. Was your father a strict agnostic or did he have any kind of inkling towards the spiritual whatsoever? I think he was definitely willing to believe there were things that we did not know. Yeah. Um, I, I can't say for sure what he thought. I, I know he, he pegged himself as a humanist. Mm -hmm and uh, sometimes as a gentle way of saying atheist, but I'm not, I, I can't say for certain that he called himself an atheist. Uh, but he, his bottom line was they believed in humanity mm -hmm. and he thought people should believe in themselves first. Whether you believe in a God or not, I think the minute that you, you believe in yourself, uh, you are able to achieve things. There's, there's, I think one of his views was, uh, or one of the things that I've gathered over the years was there was an issue with blind faith. Mm -hmm. Believing in something without questioning it. Absolutely. That came up in a number of episodes. And uh, he, I know he was adamantly against that. You should always question uh, whatever you're looking at and mm -hmm. whatever you're striving to, to achieve or believe in. It seems a lot of people in the world tend to think, oh, we can wait for God or the Son of God or whomever to come and save us mm -hmm. from ourselves. We don't need to try and take the time to change the world now because they're going to come and do it for us. It seems a lot of people use it as a crutch, use almost. it as a crutch so that they don't have to think constructively about what do we have to do on a day to day basis to try and change our civilization. I think you're you're 100 percent right. And, and that plays into the to the blind faith. Uh, and, and you don't take responsibility for your own actions and the actions of your species. 
And I, I think you're saying, well, you know what? It was God's way. It was God's will. Mm -hmm. Now, this is me talking. I can't necessarily speak on behalf of my father. Of course. But from everything that I've read and seen, uh, he, he definitely felt people should not rely on God's will to solve the situation. Tell me a bit about the Roddenberry Foundation, what its goals are, and what it has accomplished so far. Well, the, the Roddenberry Foundation is uh, very young. We started in 2010. And, um, you know, it really came from a place of, uh, you know, I had I'd really internalized my, my father's philosophy as my own uh, since he had passed away. Mm -hmm. My experience to date had been seeing these shows and meeting the fans and everyone saying, boy, wouldn't that be great to have that future? Yeah. And everyone's sort of sitting waiting for it to happen. Felt a little helpless. I felt uh, like, you know, sitting here waiting. God, I don't even know if it's going to happen. The, the impetus was I, I wanted to start trying to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I had been inspired by a lot of people, uh, fans included, and I wanted to do something that would bring that future closer, even if it was just a little. And uh, I'm also a terrible writer and producer. <laughs> um, so I, it was an opportunity to uh, uh, create a foundation that looks for uh, forward-thinking organizations that are on the cutting edge of technology mm -hmm. that are working towards the benefit of uh, humanity's long-term future. So anyone out there who's not putting band-aids on things but is mm -hmm. thinking about you know, 10, 30, 50, 100 years down the road, how do we make our species better? How do we actually achieve that Star Trek future? Mm -hmm. They don't actually have to be working towards Star Trek future, but that better future. Um, we want to work with those organizations. We want to support them. So we have four basic pillars, mm -hmm. uh, science and technology, the environment, education, and humanitarian advances. And these all overlap. Mm -hmm. they, they all have crossover. But those are the organizations that are out there working towards the betterment of those areas that, that, that we try to partner up, partner up with. With the Roddenberry Dive Team, we don't focus exclusively on the ocean. Uh, my passion just happens to be diving, so a lot of our events are dive related or ocean related. Mm -hmm. it, it's really about preserving our planet and our resources. Uh, so um, the idea of conservation is, is for every resource of our planet. So my, my personal feeling is yes, we, we do need to take uh, better care of our oceans um, because they, they are the key to, to our weather, to our water, to everything. It's always hard to explain to people the connection of, of why we need to maintain our oceans uh, because they feel like we've got enough problems here on land, why do we need to look at the oceans? Honestly, the oceans, uh, which are, are more than 70% of our planet, you know, they harbor uh, about 99% of life on our planet and they produce oxygen, they control carbon dioxide, they, they you know, control our weather. Mm -hmm. um, all the rain that comes from us, uh, you know, at some point, works its way back into the ocean and then goes full, full circle. Absolutely. So we, we really do need to take care of our oceans. And uh, it, it is, you know, these are all buzzwords that people have thrown out there before, but mm -hmm. there is a, there's an ecological balance out that needs to be kept. And we're really messing it up. We need to, you know, Another buzzword, but um, you know, we all need to start incorporate a sustainable way of living into our lives. Mm -hmm. And that can be done in many ways, but it is going to take effort on our part. You know, as you've said, you kind of really didn't begin to understand, um, you know, the, what your father meant to a lot of people and his vision meant to a lot of people until after he, has, he had passed. Do you feel responsible for carrying on that legacy? And if so, when did that really hit you? Yeah, I can't lie about that. I do, uh, there is, there is a, a, a responsibility that I feel um, and a bit of an obligation, but it's one that I'm more than happy to fill. Uh, it, it's a responsibility and an obligation that I'm very happy to have uh, because to, to have this, this, uh, this burden, mm -hmm of continuing on a message that has inspired so many people, it's really a great burden to have. Absolutely. Uh, one that inspires uh, uh, children to believe in themselves and become scientists and astronauts and teachers, or, or those of us who are different to appreciate their difference mm -hmm. and realize that different is not wrong, different is not bad. Uh, to have that burden and obligation is really a great one to have. 
and I'm using the word burden. It, yeah. is, it is a privilege. I am very proud of my father. I'm very proud of the philosophy he created, and I'm very proud of the last name. Uh, and it's something that I do want to carry with me. What do you personally feel are some of the greatest problems currently facing humanity? Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's a large question, but... It is a big question. It is a really big question. I have to say, you know, protecting all aspects of our, our environment mm -hmm. is, is definitely a major one. I don't care if you believe in global warming or not. What we're doing to this planet, we're definitely having an impact on it. Yeah. It is definitely causing things to change because of what we're doing. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to debate whether these changes are good or bad or whether they would have happened naturally or not. But with, with 7 billion and soon enough 9 mm -hmm. and more, we are dramatically affecting our planet. So we need to start thinking of not just our future, but the future of our children and our children's children and what the changes and differences, the, the, the changes that we can make now to bring us back on course, to not cause this exponential rate of destruction to our, our environment. I don't necessarily believe in the traditional model for education. Totally agree. Math, science, English. I'm not saying you don't need those. I'm yeah. saying the focus that our, our culture has on that, yeah. I think the way we do education needs to change. Absolutely. And I, I've, I've had the opportunity to read some things of people you know, taking steps in that area and, and they've been amazingly successful. Mm -hmm. So I don't have an answer as to what the right way to go is, but I think this traditional math, science, uh, um, English is, is not, I think that's just the old way of doing things. For sure. Uh, I think the model has to change. And then, you know, and that speaks to a whole nother thing. You know, people talk about, uh, Advancing technology. Uh, there's a there's a term out there called uh, well, disruptive innovation, mm -hmm. um, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, <laughs> people are you know, garage tinkers these days are creating amazing technologies, mm -hmm. and uh, they're calling these in some cases disruptive innovations, which are causing to disrupt the industry that these these uh, devices or this technology is coming out in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great thing because we've been stuck in a rut. We've been doing the same thing the same way for so long and these businesses have gotten so big and there's so much red tape and crap involved, pardon my language, um, that we need something disruptive to come in there. And now that mainstream uh, 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 media and now that, not mainstream, uh, now that, um, that through the internet people can find out about this stuff you know, and, and, and grasp these new technologies, that's what I love. It's really kind of, I think, shaking some of these uh, 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 companies from the ground up Absolutely. and giving opportunity to all these people. I mean, I love that idea. Yeah. I really love it. Did your father, in terms of what you've researched on him, do you think that he had one particular thing he most thought needed to be achieved in order to change our species and create a better future for us? I still go back to Idik. Okay. Uh, fear of change and fear of things that are different are what keep us where we are. Uh, being willing to accept new ideas is, is, is fundamental. Um, again, these, these old regimes that we have, whether it's religion or politics or big business, they're all afraid to change. Mm -hmm. They're all afraid of new ideas in most cases. I, I can't say there aren't people out there who are yeah. forward thinkers. Uh, but if our society as a whole or in, in, in uh, larger groups can start to accept new ideas and not be afraid to change the platform on which they're standing. That is what my father believes will bring us to that future. And that's what I believe will bring us to that future. I, I had this, this, this crazy notion, uh, and it you know, came from Star Trek, in the future there aren't really countries and, and states. I mean, there are and there aren't, yeah. but they're, they're no longer keeping us apart. Yeah. So there is this idea of the EU. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe in the future, France and Germany and all these things, or even the United States, Mexico and Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, what if we took down our borders? Now, I, I know there's a lot of logistics. Mm -hmm. I know it would take a lot of work. I'm just saying there's this fear of we are going to lose our culture. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, no, it, it, it'll be written in books. Second of all, we're evolving and changing anyways. Yeah. You know, go back hundreds of years. There were different cultures. There were different societies. 
we need to not fear the, the, the idea of this change and, and consider it sort of evolution. This is, this is a great way for our species to go, is to change and evolve. If someone said to me, uh, we're going to unite with uh, uh, Canada and Mexico and make it the united northern continents of whatever, yeah. I, I would be totally for that idea in the sense that I wouldn't be afraid of losing America. Yeah. That would be the basis of America. Yeah. That is what our country was founded on, this idea of uh, inclusivity, um, of, of acceptance of new ideas. So I, I would love that. I'm not saying it's easy. Oh, I'm not saying course. you can snap your fingers <laughs> and do it. I know there's a lot of politics and issues involved. I'm just saying that sort of, that old mindset of like, oh, we don't want to change because we're going to lose what we have. Yeah. No, grow, evolve, learn. If, if the cavemen stayed in their cave and yeah. were afraid to go outside, we'd still be in that damn cave. Absolutely. The best advice I was ever given was do something that scares you every day. Hmm. And that doesn't mean you have to go skydiving. Yeah. That just means do something different every day because every little change in our life allows us to grow as a person. Mm -hmm. So whether it's driving a new way to work or school, whether it's going to a different church, whether it's skydiving, all of these experiences, good and bad, especially bad, yeah. you know, influence you and, and evolve you as a person and shape who you are and shape your mindset. So the more experiences you have uh, physically and intellectually, especially intellectually, yeah. uh, the better you will be, the better you will be as a, a functioning member of society because you will have had those experiences and whether you pass them on to your kids, your, your significant other, your friends, um, you will help them grow. Do you think that everything will be all right? I do, I do. Despite the bad things that are happening in the world today and the bad things that can potentially happen, I think as a whole, the majority of people on this world are good people mm -hmm. um, and uh, just need to see uh, our potential and see that, that future that we might have. Um, inspiration is one of the strongest things that Star Trek had. Mm -hmm. You know, to inspire people to believe in themselves and to believe in that future um, will cause people to do great things. You know, it totally changes your perspective on how you want to live your life. And that is sort of a, a ripple effect on how you affect everyone else's life. So if you believe in yourself, if you believe in the future, uh, if you believe in the people around you, um, it's a small thing, but I do really think there is a ripple effect that when you interact with that next individual, part of your optimism mm -hmm. or positive outlook will be passed on through your communication interaction with that person to that person and hopefully that person will take that and and carry it on to the next person Absolutely. so uh yeah i do believe everything will be all right you know we're 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 a, we're a young species we make plenty of mistakes and mm -hmm. we will continue to make them the hope is we learn from them mm -hmm. and i think we have in the past sometimes we're slower at picking things up than, than others, but um, yeah, I, I definitely have, uh, uh, I don't even call it high hopes. I, I know we'll make it. Rod continues the legacy he inherited and is building upon it in ways I'm sure his father would be proud of. One day, many years from now, I believe we'll look back at Gene Roddenberry as one of the few who got it right. He knew where we were heading, away from greed, death, and destruction, and towards compassion, life, and exploration learning more about ourselves and existence as we journey out into the cosmos.